Hey, what is up my sexy viewers? It is Size Matters, and today we're gonna to be talking about quick sells. Specifically, buying quick sell items and not really selling them, because when you're selling quick sell items, that means you're losing keys. So I'm gonna be running down the basics of how to buy quick sell items, how to set up a trade, the things you should be saying to people, because a lot of it is conversation and working out a price with somebody logically and negotiating it and a lot of quick selling is just sitting there and no negotiating with somebody and you really need to work with your speaking abilities when you're when you're talking to somebody because you can't say things that make you seem like a scammer you have to seem logical and you have to give them reasons why they should be quick selling that item to you and then in the end you make money off of it all right so we're going to start with the most important topic and that's how do you talk to that person how do you negotiate a price on a knife so a lot of the times they're going to comment on your trade post and be like you know how much is this worth how much would you pay for this in keys and a lot of the times, um, you know, the way that I do it is I ask for 80% of the market value, uh, meaning that, you know, you just multiply 0.85, whatever the market value is, and then you get the value. You tell them that value and say, this is what I'll give you. Um, a lot of people will either be like, whoa, that's, that's crazy, you know, or they'll be like, um, all right, add me, talk to me, you know, we'll work it out from there. And then if you, if you get to that stage, if they want to talk to you about it, then they'll probably want to negotiate a price. And that's when you've got to be, you got to be really firm. You've got to give them logical reasons why this is the price and I'm not going to go over it. Maybe a little, like you shouldn't be so firm that you like tell somebody to go away because of one or two keys like one or two keys is nothing i i would budge on one to two keys but maybe like up to five keys extra it's getting kind of iffy um it just it all depends on the price of the knife if if the knife is like 140 keys and i said i'm gonna pay 110 and he's like oh well can you add an extra five that's doable but if it's on a knife that's cheaper, say like 30 key knife, and he's asking uh, to add five keys to say like a 20 key um, quick sell, then I'd be like, well, that that's a lot. Maybe like I can do 32, but I mean, not 32, wait, 22. Yeah, my bad. Um, so it, it just, it just uh, really depends on the situation at hand. And you've got to evaluate that with yourself, you got to think, well, you know, do these t two keys actually matter as much? How much will I be making in return if I am able to sell the knife? And uh, so, yeah, that's what you just got to think about. So the things that you can point out to him, um, first of all, you want to look at the quality of the knife. Uh, anything above field tested is going to be fairly easy to sell. So if he offers you a minimal wear, you can't really say much about the quality, the exterior of the knife. Uh, if it is well-worn or battle-scarred, then you can say, well, you know, well-worn or battle-scarred, this is going to be really hard to sell. So you can probably make him budge on that and be like, you know, if you were trying to sell this on the market right now, it would be pretty difficult because it is well-worn or battle-scarred. Not a lot of people want that. Um, another thing is stat track. Stat track, you wouldn't think is like, oh, that adds value, right? That's got to be better. Sometimes it's not because that extra bit of value also turns away a lot of people. It's like, why would I buy a stat track knife that I want rather than just buying the regular knife because it's cheaper? Um, stat track is going to be harder to sell in most cases. Not a lot of people are going to look for stat track when they're uh, just searching for an item because it's just numbers, really. Um, some people like it. There, I mean, there's a knife for everybody. Some people really love stat tracks. You'll be able to find a buyer. 
doesn't matter. But you can point that out to whoever's trying to sell. It's like, hey, this is stat track. It's going to be really hard to sell. Um, maybe offer them another lower price, or you know, it, maybe you can make it firm on that because it is stat track. So you just gotta come up with logical reasons. Also, another good thing to point out is a uh, gut knife. A gut knife and karambit are completely different. Karambits, people love karambits. That is like one of the most popular knives and that's probably gonna be pretty e easy to sell no matter what skin it is. Um, and then whereas the gut knife, a lot of people hate the gut knife. A lot of people think it's ugly and it's probably gonna be harder to sell. So, you, you just gotta, you, you see what I'm talking about here. I gave you all these criterias that you can negotiate with somebody. So just use that when you're talking to somebody. All right, so the final step of quick selling, which is kind of the first step, but I went in reverse because talking to people is way more important. But this is how I settle my trades. You can copy it if you want to. It doesn't really matter. It's not anything special, but the things that you really need to put in the trade is that you're looking for quick sell knives. Um, you don't have to necessarily buy things that are field tested and up. That's what I do. I mean, that's my personal thing. Battle scarred and well worn are they're sellable knives. I mean, any knife is a sellable knife. It just takes a little bit longer for well worn and battle scarred. You may be able to get those a little bit cheaper, being that you know you can negotiate with people because of that. Um, also put that you're taking 20% off the market value or you're buying knives for 80%. Um, that's very, very important that you put that in there. Uh, say how many keys you have in stock currently. That's also very important because somebody may offer you an insane amount of keys and be like, oh, well, you, you've only got this many keys. You should have put the amount of keys you had. So a lot of people sometimes don't look at it they're like oh well whatever man i didn't see it shit but you know you should always put that there um i have my trades on auto bump so i always tell people to send me offers sometimes they don't sometimes they just put a comment on csgo i check it every once in a while i say it may take a few minutes so it's whatever they do what they want and i make them offers and we go from there uh, you have to be pretty quick with this because a lot of the times people are selling quick selling stuff because they want to get rid of it and if you're not there as soon as they offer you you're not going to get it because they're going to go to other people and then other people will give them the keys for it so this is something that you need to be on top of i would say check it every couple of hours would be good and make sure people aren't giving you offers and communicate with people communication is key so if somebody's like you know i want this amount of keys for this knife and you don't feel that that is the right price for it then you know you can talk to them if you really are interested in buying that knife you can be like well you know 20 percent off is this not not this so can could you do that and then if they say no then they say no life goes on so it's really up to you how you uh, do it. It's all f up for interpretation. You do you trade the way you want to trade. This is just a guideline for you guys, and I found that this way of trading works really good. Being nice to people pays off. Uh, it definitely pays off. I've I've been nice to people throughout all my trading and a lot of times they'll give me special like offers because I'm being nice to them. They're like, oh, well, I can do this price since you're a good guy or something. So being nice to people is very important. Um, I know CSGO as a community can be kind of dicks. Like a lot of the times people can be dicks. Like if you go into a comp match, there's always like this one asshole in there. But uh, be nice to people, even if they aren't nice to you back. And if they aren't nice, you should probably just ignore them in the first place. So yeah, hope this guide uh, really helps you guys. I hope this uh, helps you make some keys. I know it's worked. A, it's worked really well for me. I've made hundreds of keys by doing this, and I guarantee you, if you stick to this, you will make 
hundreds of keys as well. So, uh, yep. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.